This is Annuity Straight Talk. Since 2008, your host, Brian Anderson, has helped clients nationwide navigate the complex market for annuities. With Brian's assistance, hundreds of clients have achieved a profitable and secure retirement. I would know, because Brian has answered many of my questions concerning annuities and retirement planning. So that you can benefit as well, let's get started. Here's Brian. Hello and welcome everyone to the Annuity Straight Talk podcast. My name is Brian Anderson, founder and creator of all things Annuity Straight Talk. Um, constant process to develop content, answer questions, make sure there's information for you guys to make good decisions in retirement. Here I am for episode number 35. And as a pure coincidence, uh, on episode 35, I'm going to talk about a 35% bonus annuity because lots and lots and lots of people have been calling me about it. I probably should have put this out right away just because... I think a lot of people have been misled by it, but it just kind of dawned on me. You know what? Then that's the that's what this 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 podcast, the newsletter, has been about. It's answering questions one time, so I don't have to keep writing or saying the same thing over and over again. Of course, if you have a question, you don't know where to find it. I will I'll answer your questions and all that stuff. But this makes it a lot easier pe- for people to find things in an un- unassuming, no pressure way. They just look up the podcast, say, oh, okay, I get it. And then they don't have to call me. So it saves me time, saves you time. And uh, you don't have to, and you can also, a lot of people are obviously nervous about making a phone call, thinking that I'm just going to let latch on to them and sell them an annuity or uh, shove it down their throats. No, nope, I don't do that. Uh, it's all information and I'm here to help if you need something. So I am going to show you the newsletter which is not, as a, as I'm recording, it's not quite done, and that's okay. Um, but it'll be ready to go when the podcast goes out uh, sometime next week. So here we are. So the 35% annuity bonus, and the reason I'm doing this here is because I've spent, you know, it'll take me about 30, 40 minutes to, you know, do the podcast, and it'll take me, you know, it takes me about an hour to write everything out and do it the right way. But in the past few weeks, I've probably spent, uh, 10 or 12 hours explaining this to people, uh, phone calls, emails, uh, lots of people figure because this company, and I'm not going to talk about the, the company or product. If you know it, you know it, um, again, and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, you got to understand what it means, but a lot of people call and say, well, I'm giving this, you know, there's this bonus that's 35%. And so I got to go back and remind everyone that insurance companies didn't come to be extremely strong, stable financial institutions by giving away money. When you get a bonus on a contract, it either comes with restrictions or um, it's, or something else is taken away from the contract. But what happens with this product in particular is, or, you know, and, and a lot of others that are very similar is they're going to get a, uh, you know, it's, there's like a sales army behind it. And when they've got a reason to call, um, you may have looked at it in the past when the bonus was 15%, 20%, 25%, all that stuff. And now it's 35. They're going to call you. The bonus is now 35 and you got to get it now. This is the best deal you're ever going to find. And if, and like anything else, it's probably for a limited time. And then in another few weeks or a month or so, they're going to take the bonus from 35 back to 30 or 25. And then they're all going to call you. You got to hurry up and do it. You're going to miss out. It's going away. It's going away. And so, you know, be that as it may, it's a say it's obviously a sales game. And everybody says, why do I see this so much? Because there's a huge army behind this product, this company's distribution. And there's a lot of guys, I I've said it this way. I'm going to be, I'm going to be blunt. There's a lot of guys that sell annuities that are either too stupid or too lazy to go find something else. So they don't even know. They just think, oh, this is the best. I, uh, you know, my broker told me this is the best. Well, the brokers want to sell it. They got a financial interest interest as well. And so a lot of people, I've had a lot of people with this product because I've written reports on it in the past. And people will call and say, "Um, well, I read what you wrote about that. And I've got to say, I disagree with you 
because I have had that for four years and it's working quite well. Um, and so this is what I say to everyone is I'm not saying that there is not a use for this product. There very, there most certainly is a use for the product, but, uh, the way it's constructed and the purpose of the contract, a lot of people sell it as like a one size fits all kind of does a little bit of everything. Well, I'll tell you the Jack of all trades is the master of none. And that's speaking as a decathlete, uh, which I did in college and a little while after college, if you know what a decathlete is, it's 10 events in track and field. People say, wow, you must've been really good. Well, yeah, I was pretty good at the decathlon, but I mean, relatively speaking, I was pretty good, but still we weren't as good as, you know, we weren't as good as high jumpers as the high jumpers. We weren't as good at 400 meter runners as 400 meter runners. Anyway, we were the jack of all trades, the master of none. And so um, I did that for a period of my life. I don't want to do it anymore. And when it comes to annuities, I think you got to look at the fine print. So let's see. So rates on everything have kind of come up in the past month or so, um, which is great. So there's, it's, it's a, it's a really good thing. Um, cause you can get good, a, a good deal no matter what you're looking for, but there's nothing out there that's free money. There's fine print that goes along with bonuses and you've got to focus on that to really wrap your mind around what the contract does. So, um, when a bonus, I said this before, when a bonus is involved, it means that something has been stra- subtracted from another part of the contract. So if you get a, the, there's a, a true bonus where you actually get a boost to your ca- a cash value and that, that comes with lower cap and participation rates. So you don't get, you get the bonus up front, but you don't have as much growth in the back end. Um, that's what I consider a true bonus. Um, there's a, there's a few of them out there. Um, they do exist. People ask me about them all the time. And I explain to people that I prefer the contracts with no bonuses and higher potential. So if you, like every contract discloses this. So all the companies put their information out there, but there's a, a gap between what the sales agent says and what the company actually states. So you get a 35% bonus, they'll slap down a brochure. It says 35% initial premium bonus. And then in tiny letters, you know, credited to income account value only, right? So in this specific case, the bonus uh, only comes into effect if you take lifetime income a number of years down the road. So all, it, you know, it looks good on the surface, but it really just, it's there to get the quick sale, entice your signature, bam, you got it. I was like, wow, I got 30, 35% free money. And, and people will call me and disagree with me. Well, that's not what the agent said. I'm sorry. Like I'm not, I got no dog in the fight except to make sure you don't do something stupid with your money. And cause I know when someone calls and I, and I determine this product is not suited for you. I never, there, I have a hundred percent loss ratio on that. So I can never say, no, this product doesn't work for you, but Oh, go look at this other annuity because if they realize they've been lied to, then they're not going to trust anyone. So my purpose is simply to make sure that they don't get into something that they don't understand. And so I'm going to explain this one to you as well, uh, right now. Okay. So if you put $100,000 into the annuity and they give you a 35 bonus, how much money do you have? You have $100,000. The bonus is paid to the income value, which makes the income value $135,000. It's not extra money. One of my biggest complaints about bone or the, these types of bonuses in, in the first place is for the life of me, I can't understand why they put a dollar sign in front of it. They should just give you $135,000, 135,000 income credits, not $135,000 because people see the dollar sign. That's very misleading. And if you understand what compliance issues go going around in the financial services industry and what we have to do to, uh, you know, you know, disclosures and avoid misleading information. Um, I don't, I can't for the life of me figure, I've been saying this for 15 years. Why is there a dollar sign? It's not real money. It's just a bigger figure to calculate lifetime income. So um, in this case, the company makes you wait a number of years. So there's a period of years where you don't even have access to that. And I've, I've met people in the past that say that believe, well, the agent told me that I can take the 135,000 or I can take the 35% bonus And after the first year, there's only a 10% surrender penalty. And so I can walk away and pay the penalty and um, I'll make 25% 
I think that's a great idea. And then next year, I'll just buy another one and do the same thing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you in the nicest way possible that that's a ridiculous idea. And you're going to be sorely mistaken if you think you're going to get that money. It doesn't happen. So if you wait a number of years, you got to wait a number of years before you can exercise the bonus uh, because it's only for income. So let's assume, again, like assume nothing has changed. Now the contract's going to grow and there's additional bonuses on top of that, but just to look at it simply, all right? But we don't need to complicate the calculation. So you wait that number of years. So the point in time when you can take income happens to be at the same time the contract is surrender free. You can either take your money and walk away. Now, if nothing can happen, and I know it's going to grow a little bit, so it's going to be a little more, but we're using the simple numbers. You can either take your money and, and walk away or activate guaranteed life income for life. If you take your money and leave, how much? It's $100,000. That's what you put in. You're guaranteed not to lose. There are no fees on the contract. That's what you get if you walk away. Say you want to buy a motor home and you take the money out. That's $100,000. If you activate lifetime income, the amount will be calculating use a, using a payout factor that depends on your age. The older you are, the higher the payout. And the $135,000 income value. It's not free money. It's only a factor. If your payout rate is 5%, so if you bought it at 60, this is a 10-year wait. If you bought it at 60, waited till 70, uh, a single life payout is 5% for one person. I think the joint, uh, if it's a husband and a wife, is 4.5%. So if your payout rate is 5%, you get 6750 annually for the rest of your life. Let me highlighting this. Okay. This is considered to be the guaranteed minimum payout. This is what you need to focus on. A lot of times people will leave that page or agents will leave that page out of the illustration. Let's show you the projection. So um, one thing I do now, I met someone earlier this week um, who had purchased this contract uh, recently and they said, Hey, we're great. We're, we don't need to, we can, we can wait the 10 years. It's not a big deal. And we did all of our planning based on the guaranteed minimum that way we know that if there's extra in the contract, it's just going to be a little bit better. I think that's the perfect way to do it. Okay. Now I'm not going to say I think it's a great deal, but you have to understand not free money. So it may work for you, but it does not work for anyone, for everyone. Um, sorry. It does work for some people, not <laughs> anyway. Um, it's a bonus that in, boosts your income and, but you have to, way to get it. So here's what I'll say. There are certain situations where it certainly does not fit. And this is where I run into a lot of problems. If you pull money out before the waiting period is over, if you take a free withdrawal, then you can take a free withdrawal. Then you're going to have a proportionate reduction in the uh, income benefit. So if you take out, in this case, you got 135,000 income value. And you got a hundred thousand cash value. If you take out your ten percent, which is ten grand, it's a ten percent re reduction in the one thirty-five. So it comes down to one hundred twenty-one thousand five hundred. So you lose the bonus. So a lot of people say, "Well, I can just take the in, uh, take the withdrawals, and it'll be fine." There's still some, some going to be something left. Well, the contract is not built to grow intentionally. It doesn't grow a whole lot. But taking free withdrawals, you can do it, but it defeats the purpose of the contract anyway. So you have to have. That's why I can't believe it's sold to so many people because it's a very specific use. You got to have 10 years where you don't want to touch the money in order to maximize the contract. There's a lot of people that call and they get, um, I, I think this contract is probably past the age issue, past the age of 60 or maybe 65. If you're, I'm going to stick with about 60 to 62 or three, and I'll tell you why is the, the oldest you should be before, before you buy a contract like this. Because a lot of people, a lot of people are using uh, the contract with uh, IRA money, so qualified funds. And if you've got to, if you're going to, in the deferral period, if you're going to be forced to take required minimum distributions, which happens at age 72, then you're forced to, uh, work against the contract because you're going to take the RMD and you're going to lose the bonus for that money that you pulled out. Very, very cut and dry. That just a lot of people do that. A lot of people, 65, 68 say, Hey, this is great. And because there's, because there's one thing that, that, uh, there's a couple of things, 
um, that it also offers, that bonus is available as a death benefit if it's paid over five years. So you're 135. If you die, your beneficiaries can elect to take the 100,000 one lump sum, or they can take the 135 equal payments over five years. So a lot of people say, well, that's a great, great death benefit. Well, yeah, it's really nice if you die in the first year or two or three, um, but the longer you hold it, then the less yield that actually translates to be. Um, but it's still, it needs, it needs to be stated. So, uh, I do, you know, I met somebody recently like, Hey, listen, it, it's 70 years old. They were looking at this product and they said, I want to buy this and we're just going to leave the money to, uh, uh, we're going to leave the money to the kids and we like the enhanced death benefit. So, you know, 10 years, 10, 12 years out, if they get, you know, a 2% growth rate on the contract, yeah, it could turn into a nice, you know, 4% with the bonus on a death benefit, but your, your beneficiaries have to know to elect to take five years. I'm not quite sure how sharp the customer service is going to be. And most of the, a lot of these guys selling this product are 65. Hell, they're going to be retired anyway. You got to make sure the beneficiaries know if that's your angle. But, you know, these guys that were 70 to 80, I would say for a death benefit, it's not a bad, it's not a bad option. If it was non-qualified money, if it was cash, then it'd be better because they wouldn't have to touch it, but they were going to use their IRA money for it. And I thought, no, 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 you're way better off because you're, you're going to lose that bonus anyway. The contract itself is only going to grow at 2%, maybe three on average. So, and their illustrations will show much higher, but I think you got to go really conservative on it. So, you know, it, w- it wouldn't work for a death benefit for them. Um, so that's kind of one of the big issues I really see is like required minimum distributions. Um, there's also on the contract, there's a long-term care enhancement. If you need long-term care, uh, there's, you know, every contract defines a little bit differently, but I think this is fairly open-ended. If you need nursing home care, um, they'll double your income payment, but you got to be in that 10 year window or you got to be past 10 years. And, and those things that I've talked about them a lot, there's a separate podcast on long-term care annuities. Um, so you, you can go look that up specifically, but on these products where they enhance the income payout, I tell the people this all the time, it's just, they're paying you back with your own money. It's only an accelerated return of your money and every annuity, just about every annuity that I can think of has terminal illness and nursing home waivers of surrender charges. So you can probably do it anyway. That's why I settle back on just with all the optionality, get the highest growth rate you can, the highest potential on your money. If you want to protect it, that's the way to do it. This is not a bad product, but it is sold to too many people who truly do not understand what the bonus is. I've probably, I bet I've killed 30 sales this year because it just, it does not make sense. And then I've ran into several people that, um, you know, and I know people in the past that have this and and it hasn't performed well. I know a couple of people who have called and it has actually performed pretty well. And, um, you know, it's, uh, and once you have it, you probably just keep it. But anyway, so again, there's reasons why you shouldn't use it, uh, specifically, but that's why, uh, a lot of guys will sell it. Cause it's like, well, look at this. You got a 35% bonus. You get guaranteed lifetime income. You can take 10% free withdrawal. There's an enhanced death benefit for your family and you got long-term care coverage. Well, it's not long-term care coverage. It's an accelerated payment of your return of your own money. So all those statements wrapped up in one is just kind of an overzealous hype. But, you know, the sales army, here's your pitch. And you say, uh, you know, they do this at the dinner seminars and you say, well, a 35% bonus, long-term care, death benefit, guaranteed income, 10% free withdrawal. Uh, you Typically, you're going to get one of those. Not all three. So... I mean, if you, you know, you get, you might get the income and then you might use the long-term care for a few years. Once the account value is zero, you don't get a benefit. Then you just revert right back to, um, your normal income payment. But that's why there's, there's very few situations where it's actually an advantage for you to, to, you know, get the long-term care. It's uh, lots of, lots of details. If you want to talk about it, you can, uh, you can give me a call. Uh, but that's the 35% annuity bonus. I don't know. I see it all the time. And again, if I can answer the question for some people without them having to call me, I think, I just think there's a lot of people out there who read what I write. They don't get a hold of me and they take somebody's word for it. Like I said, I mean, you get guys will argue, well, that's not what the agent said. I mean, I don't care. And so you pull up the website, you pull up the insurance company's website. This is what the company says. So they're the ones writing the contract. And that's, 
That's a good reminder. You're not, you don't do business with me or another salesperson. You're doing business with an insurance company. I facilitate the transaction. I help with, uh, you know, placing the contract, servicing the contract, doing all those things, changing allocations, withdrawals, make your life easier, but your business happens with the insurance company. So you better pay attention to what has, uh, what the insurance company says and what they state. And a few weeks ago I did, I talked about the messed up annuity where, you know, we, you know, analyzed all the contracts for all the right reasons. And we found, you know, and then I got bad information when I called for a uh, contract update on, at the company and sent me into a tailspin thinking, oh man, but we had to go right back to the contract and look at what the insurance company said, was able to verify uh, it was a false alarm. The contract was fine. But in this situation, if you don't understand what that bonus means, or if you believe that the contract's going to do all the things that the salesperson says, you might find yourself in a position of trouble. And uh, unfortunately I've had, a, I've seen a lot of people put the majority of their retirement assets in this. I think it's probably appropriate for, you know, 20 to 25%, maybe um, I've sold a similar there. And there's other, there are other contracts that do exactly the same thing. It's not the only one. There's probably four or five of them that, it, you know, income rider uh, is free uh, performance-based. I did an episode on performance-based income annuities. That's what this is. Um, Anyway, you can look look all those up if you want to, and uh, um, it's just I don't know. It's one of those things that's uh, uh, kind of frustrating, uh, you know. And the couple times I've sold similar contracts, I've been, uh, you know, I think uh, one guy it was about ah maybe like ten percent of his assets, uh, ten twelve years from retirement, it worked perfectly. Uh, but that's it's worth worth a try. But don't overcommit if you uh, if this product does work for you, and it might. Uh, don't over, I'm not going to sell it cause I, I don't like the thing, but you can, uh, if, if it's perfect for you and you just don't believe what I say and you think it's great, then I'll give you my blessing and say, go for it with, uh, whoever that guy is. So anyway, um, if you want to chat about your situation, take this and talk about a few more details. You can give me a call at 800-438-5121, um, schedule a call, any page of the website, top right corner, schedule a call button, pick your time zone, pick your time write some notes, tell, tell me what you want to talk about. And I will give you a call, uh, simple and easy, no pressure. I'm here to help. So, um, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to see the videos, uh, or, uh, your favorite podcast platforms, these are going out as newsletters. I've been kind of on a roll with sending out podcast newsletters so you can read it, you can watch it, or you can just listen to it. Uh, not a whole lot of visual aid today, but I showed you the newsletter and some of the bullet points that I think are important. Um, and I'll finish that newsletter. It's going to go on next week. So thank you for joining me for episode 35 on the 35% bonus annuity. Uh, my name is Brian Anderson. I'm signing off. I'm out of here and uh, have a great day. Thanks guys. Bye. You have been listening to Annuity Straight Talk. The preceding information is for informational and educational purposes only and does not represent tax, legal, or investment advice. The views expressed by guests on this program are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Annuity Straight Talk or its partners. No information presented today should be acted upon without meeting with a qualified and licensed professional. It is important that you read all insurance contract disclosures carefully before making a purchase decision. Guarantees are based on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the insurance company.